Personal branding is one of the most overlooked and underrated things that realtors have to do to make sure they thrive in shifting markets. Today, we're going to be bringing on my buddy Mike Sherrard for our second part in this series of the market shift and how you can thrive inside it. What's up guys, Louis Gault here again with you. Thank you so much for joining us. We're gonna bring Mike on again for part two of this to talk about personal brand, something that he is an expert in the field on. Two quick things before we get going. The first one, if you want to be entered in to win a free subscription to the Social Agent Academy, which is from Mike Sherrard, who is crushing on social media. I'm sure you know who he is. Um, you can do that by subscribing to this channel, liking this video and commenting with your biggest takeaway from the discussion we have today so do all those three things you'll be entered in to win a free subscription this course is insane it is amazing it's helping all of our agents continue to thrive in the shifting market the second thing guys if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with mike and myself to talk about how we could partner in the future and help to build your business and your personal brand then the link is in the description and it's also in the pinned comment you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with us we can chat with you we'd love to see how we can help you and make sure that you thrive in this market. So let's bring on Mike. All right, here we are back again, guys. Uh, it's my pleasure to have my good buddy Mike Sherrard on. What is up, man? What's going on? Super excited, uh, especially about this topic today. This is one that is super relevant, super important, and one that has helped me build my you know multiple seven figure peer business. So uh, this yeah. is going to be a good one for people that stay to the end because we're going to be diving deep. Yeah, and that, <laughs> that's the thing. Uh, this is actually how Mike and I met was through. A mastermind on this content so branding is i think a lot of the times something that people don't really understand and i think that's what we're kind of kind of break down today and exactly how to utilize this thing but it's such a, an important important thing to have especially in this market shift so Let's dig in, Mike. Yeah, guys. So we're going to be diving into how to build a unique personal brand uh, that differentiates you from the sea of competition, but actually attracts clients. Um, because as we're going to talk about, strong personal brands not only get more business, but they also become wildly profitable because the cost per acquisition of a client is much cheaper when they're coming directly to you instead of you having to go, you know, spend a ton of money on, you know, ZillowRealtor.com leads or, you know, spending money on ads and, and you know, going out and having to spend time on prospecting and things like that. So uh, this is going to be a good one and as you're going to be able to see here uh personal branding is something that is very near and dear to my heart so for anybody that doesn't know who i am um my name is Mike Sherrard. I'm from Calgary, Alberta, the mother, you know, probably northern neighbor to many of you guys up here in Canada. Um, and I was a top producing agent for multiple years, but I was able to build a personal brand leveraging social media and all the strategies that we're going to be able uh, to go into today in order to, again, become, you know, not just become top of mind, but remain top of mind within my market, but also external to my market. Um, and I've been able to be, you know, become ranked number one on every list related to social media in my market. Uh, I train thousands of agents every year on my YouTube channel in order to show them how to scale their business the modern way by leveraging these strategies. Um, and then again, kind of talking about personal branding for anybody that's at one of these modern brokerages, I've been able to break every record um, in the history of our brokerage EXP related to the personal attraction because I built a strong brand that people like, know, and trust and understand that they can partner with, which really kind of changed my business as well. So it doesn't matter if you're doing business the traditional way or the modern way, even though this presentation is entirely about increasing your production, it will help you in any way that you're willing to to grow. So before kind of getting into uh, some of the tactical stuff that you guys need to be doing, because what I'm going to do in this presentation is make sure that we walk you through step by step how to create your personal brand. But I just want to show you and lead with some examples of strong personal brands so that you guys can actually have a bit of a reference here as to what we're talking about, because we will go step by step, show you different activities that you could do, different things that you need to kind of think about in order to create your personal brand that is specific to you. But here's a couple of examples of strong personal brands. Uh, um, which has actually been done by my branding agency here, where we can just see the congruency of their brand. We can see that it's unique to each individual. It stands out. It's not basic. And every person has their own kind of flair. You can see that even though your text or your font, 
even though you know things like your colors and your headshot is not your personal brand it's a way to communicate your brand and it's mm -hmm. really important to you know be able to look at some of these different people and say hey sean and scott over here on the you know far left hand side it's pretty easy to tell that they're luxury agents because of the black and the gold and the suits and everything like that whereas it's pretty easy to see that somebody in the middle here like nick is a little bit more casual it's a little bit more you know laid back and blue collar you know with the bolo tie and things like that and more neutral colors like the greens and then you could see here you know looking at the delaney and sands group you can see that they're probably in a beach area because of the style of branding that they have here so it's all about communicating the message through your branding and you can see some other examples here that are really powerful related to different types of people and their market but let's start diving in and the first thing before we can actually talk about what personal branding actually is and what you know how to create a strong personal brand we have to talk about what it's not because we need to have that definition clear your personal brand and branding is not your brokerage brand right we talk about this constantly where a lot of people rely on you know the brokerage brand because they think somehow that it's going to bring the business and i'm here to tell you that it's not i've been at the number one eight, uh, brokerage in my city that has all the accolades all the top producers i left that to go to a boutique brokerage that nobody had ever heard of and tripled my business in two months and then it came to a brokerage that's you know modern cloud based that again is new innovative and you know not many people had heard about it in my market and again my income 10x in one month or in one year rather so when you start to look at this it's all about you being able to communicate your value because there's great agents at every brokerage there's terrible agents at every brokerage and the what you have to understand is that the ones at the, your brokerage that are actually crushing it, they're not relying on the brokerage brand. They're relying on their personal brand because people are coming to them because of who they are. If the brokerage brand mattered, they'd also be coming to you, but they're not. So let's talk about how we can get people to start coming to you. Uh, and again, just to kind of reiterate, it's not your logo. It's not your colors. It's not your font. So we'll kind of get that out of the way because it is a way to communicate your brand. Um, but it's also not static. And I think this is where a lot of people struggle because a lot of people think that their brand, if they're going to create it, it has to be perfect today. But what you'll see is that every single year, I overhaul my personal brand. And I do this because it's dynamic in nature. You should always want to be improving it and elevating it and changing it based on who you are. In mm. the beginning, I wore suits every single day. I didn't leave my house without one. And that was, you know, how I got started in order to alleviate people from asking me about how long I've been in the business, how old I am, things like that. Well, now that I've been able to build a strong business and become successful, I've been able to get to the point where I'm just me, which is t-shirts, jeans, sweats, joggers, whatever, and a lot more casual, right? So it's evolving over time, which I really hope gives you a bit of confidence that you don't feel like you have to make it perfect today because my brain in the beginning is completely different on the same trajectory, but it's different from what it was back in the beginning. It's elevated, it's more authentic, it's more transparent. And the last thing is it's not solely who you are today. And I want you to understand that with your personal brand, you're kind of future pacing where you want to go, right? And that's why I wanted to become a luxury agent. So I dressed like a luxury agent. I went to, you know, my quality of my work was luxury colors, luxury branding. I wanted to get into that space, which I did. I wasn't that in the beginning because I was a new agent that didn't know anybody and I was broke, but knowing I wanted to get there, it's kind of like the typical quote, you want to dress for the job you want, not the job that you have right? You have to look at it as a future pace and it's not faking it till you make it. It's literally just projecting into the future. Here's what I want to become recognized and reverse engineering that and saying, I need to be recognized for that today in order to actually get to that point. Yeah. Everything we're talking about, <laughs> I was the exact same thing, almost a victim of, you know, I, I moved to a certain brokerage because of the brand. We moved our team over there because we thought the brand of the brokerage was going to be like, okay, this is our next step turns out it wasn't that way i also have evolved over time as you well know you know we've worked on a lot of this stuff together i had big bold gold logos and i was wearing suits and ties like you wear all the time and and i think the biggest thing for me was that it didn't correlate and translate to my target demographic the people that i actually work with and want to work with were a little bit like huh that doesn't make sense so my brand evolved over time from you know, I jumped in thinking, okay, real estate guys have to wear suits, they have to drive BMWs, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. And it evolved over time to be like, oh, actually, here's, you know, who I really am. 
and here's the people that I speak to and relate to. And when I found that kind of branding, that's when my business really started to take off. So, um, you know, I wouldn't change it because I think like you're saying, you have to evolve, you have to learn about what you're doing and what your brand is actually going to be. But it's definitely a trap that I see people fall into at the start of the business. Yeah, definitely, Louis. So, you know, let's start giving people exactly what they need to do in order to create their personal brand. Because I want to make sure that by the end of this video, you guys don't need to go down the rabbit hole and search for a ton of things or pay for people's programs or anything like that. You can literally just start today. Um, and I want to give you kind of the actionable steps that you could take in order to get there. So the first thing that we actually need to do is understand who the heck you actually are. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a big one because unfortunately, a lot of people are just saying, I love the look of Ryan Serhant, or I love Josh Ullman, or I love this agent of my market, or I love that guy on YouTube or whatever the situation is. And what you're doing is in an inauthentic way, trying to just replicate and duplicate what they're doing. But if that's not authentic to you, if that's not who you truly are, this is why so many agents actually struggle with creating content because they're creating content that's not natural to them, which makes it very difficult because you have to put on a different front, you have to research topics, and you're not doing it from experience, you're doing it from the desire to look like somebody else. But what you mm -hmm. have to understand is that nobody can be a better version of you than you can. So that is your competitive advantage when building your personal brand is if you're more introverted, if you're more extroverted, if you're older, if you're younger, whatever your situation is, this is going to be an opportunity for you to lean into that because there's thousands of people in your market that are just like you. Not everybody's outgoing. Not everybody wears suits and ties. Not everybody drives fancy cars. Not everybody does that. So you don't have to feel like you need to do that because people, you know, at the end of the day with your personal brand, the goal is to get people to like, know, and trust you. And if you can do that, the best way to is ultimately just by being very transparent, being yourself, and people are going to see that. Even I look back at my old YouTube videos, you know, that wasn't me, right? I was struggling because I was trying to like overcompensate for my fears of getting on camera and my low self-esteem by just being overly energetic and being very loud. That's not me, right? If you look at my mm -hmm. content now, it's very me. If you look at my videos, you know, tomorrow, you'll see that that's exactly how I am in person. So it's really important to lean into that because that actually makes a massive difference in terms of how engaged people are. Um, and that ultimately comes from sharing your story, right? When you share your story, you know, not only does it allow people to connect on a deeper level with you, um, but, you know, actually based on hormones, it actually makes a big difference because it releases oxytocin, which allows people to build the deepest level connection with you. So when you start looking at this, right, this is why, you know, people buy Teslas because they love Elon Musk. This is why people will, you know, look at Virgin because they love Richard Branson or any things, you know, first form though, people will, you know, buy first form supplements because they love Andy Frazella, right? And you look at this, people that have the strongest personal brands are the ones that ultimately can almost make yourself recession proof because people are working with you because of you right? The product or the service becomes secondary and this increases retention. And this is really important for getting repeat and referral business because if you build a more intimate connection with your audience, it's much more difficult for your clients to leave because now they're leaving a friend, they're not leaving a service. And if you can do that and really lean into the emotional side of things, you're going to increase the retention of your clients. But people should be able to look at your content and know exactly who you are, right? This is one that I'm sure you could touch on, Louis, but uh, it's one of the things that I see a lot of agents struggle with. If you look at somebody's Instagram, you know, most people just have a bunch of canvas stock photos, stock images here, properties there. You can't look at that and say, I know who this man or woman is. And if you can't do that, then nobody's going to be able to connect with you because people don't connect with stock images. They don't connect with properties They connect with people. Right. Yeah. And people are willing, you know, people are deciding to work with an agent that they feel like they're going to have the most fun and enjoyable experience with that. they actually want to go have a beer with not the one that they're dreading to link up with because their personalities are completely contrasting. Yeah. And if you really think about it, guys, you're probably doing this subconsciously already with different things. You know, if you think about if you're looking for a personal trainer or a gym and you look them up on Instagram, if they just have motivational quotes everywhere, you know, okay, I get it, but everyone can post that. If they have stories of what they're doing today, what the workout is, motivational things that you see them actually talking and saying, then instantly you're like, okay, I like this person's vibe. I get it, I get what they're doing. You know, I think the greatest example of this in the history of the planet is The Rock. You look at him, you look at that personal brand, you, but, and obviously this is a, a, a huge, you know, megastar, but I think one of the things is that he shares his story 
all the time. He doesn't care what he says. You know, he 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 doesn't mind, you know, cussing anybody who knows like kids are following and stuff like that because he wants to be authentic all the time. And because of that, we watch his new movies. We buy his tequila. You know, we buy everything that he does because we believe him and we believe he's authentic. And because of that brand that he's built, pretty much every time he comes out with something, it's a hit because people are like, cool. I know he provides a certain amount of quality. I know he's true to himself. I know he loves his mom. Like all this stuff that he talks about all the time, um, it really does cement the legacy. I buy first form um, supplements because I love Andy Frisella because I know he's real. He talks about what he thinks, what he feels. And no matter you know if you agree or disagree with some things, they're authentic. And that's what matters with branding. And it's so hard for people to do because... Sometimes you don't want to step outside that comfort zone of those real estate, you know, stock images and your broker posts and things about just real estate. You don't want to talk about yourself or how you really feel about a subject. But a lot of the time, if that's what you actually start doing, that's when people attach and they grab on, they believe you, and then your business starts running. So it's it's such an interesting concept. Yeah. And, and that kind of, you know, leads to one of the last points here before we kind of go on to the next one is, you know, you need to identify your why. And as Louis alluded to, like with the Brock, like we understand that one of his biggest wives is his mom, right? And that translates through his content, which again, shows that he's very family based. And that's why he does so many things, you know, stories on Instagram with his kids and things like that, which allows it to humanize, like you feel like you know him, even mm. though he's, you know, worth hundreds of millions of dollars, eventually he'll be a billionaire, but you feel like you could just go hang out with him today and it wouldn't be weird weird because he shows that side of him. So it's really important for you to be able to identify your why, why you're actually doing this, you know, whether it be your family, your spouse, your kids, or whatever your situation is, because that needs to translate and be communicated through your content so that people can actually get to know other sides to you and that you're not just out here trying to get deals. And that's all you're trying to do is selfishly make a bunch of money. You're doing this for other people. And a lot of other people have families, a lot of other people have a spouse or kids or dating somebody or whatever. And that's going to give you an opportunity to connect with more people that also have those similar things. Um, and then also, this is something that I really like to ask people, which is you need to be able to identify why a buyer or seller would work with you versus the number one agent in your market. Because at some point, if you get into enough conversations, you will go up against the number one agent in your market. And if you can't explain your value proposition and you just revert to the traditional, well, I just love helping people and I'm going to work so hard for you, that ain't it. That's not going to cut it. You're not going to get the deal. So you really need to understand what your value proposition is. What do you bring to the table that's unique, that's different, that people can connect with and that they can see the value in? So now let's kind of go into how to actually create the message of communicating your personal brand, right? This is a little summary exercise that you can go through, um, which is looking at your and and your best stat, right? And your and is going to be something where we're trying to fill in this sentence here, which is I am real estate, right? We're realtors. I am real estate and put in your and who is the best at your value proposition. So when you start looking at this, your and is going to be your hobby, your passion, your visual cue from me, purple, cars, that type of thing. For other people, it's fitness or it's cooking or it's horses or whatever. And then your best stat is going to be your unique value proposition. What do you bring to the table that either nobody else does or that most people struggle with, right? So this is going to be something where if we look at mine, as I'm going to show you guys in a little bit here, because I'm going to actually map, you know, map out the transition of the, you know, my personal brand and what that journey looked like from start till now, you'll see that, you know, I am real estate and cars, who's the best at social media strategies or modern strategies for real estate. And this is really powerful because for me, a lot of people ask how as a new agent that was broke that, you know, didn't know anybody got into the luxury space. Well, being my and was cars, I went to all the exotic car meetups. And when you can authentically connect with people with a similar passion, you're not going up to some millionaire that owns a Lamborghini or Ferrari and saying, hey, dude, you know, I'm a realtor. Can we work together? You say, hey, I love that car. It's one of my favorite models. You know, what made you decide to choose that? And you can start to get into that dialogue that's very natural and authentic. And then eventually, inevitably, it's going to come up with what do you do, right? And but it's really important to be able to connect with people in an authentic way that isn't salesy, isn't pitchy, and isn't soliciting, but is honest to you. Yeah, I, I think one of the big things about this, is, and when it clicks with people, is we all want to be like all things to all men, we, we think, okay, we just want to get as many clients as possible, we want to get out there and market to everyone. But 
here's the deal guys like there's this like there's this much real estate for sale and people buying and selling all you need is this much to make yeah. six figures or more you know like less than that so having this authenticity where you can really click into a community if it's you know your gym or crossfit or you know cars like mike or jujitsu like me like i can't tell you how many i, I would say about 60 percent of my business comes from my jujitsu gym which is a tiny gym of 200 people 200 people and most of my business comes from there and i'm a top producer here so once you can really figure out this part of it this is what can really springboard you to to your maximum potential definitely it's it's super important and as louis says you know there's 5,000 transactions that happen, you get, you know, 10, you know, 1% of that and you're going to be good, right? Every yeah. single month, right? So it's not, you know, you don't have to be everything to everybody because if you're trying to be everything to everybody, you're going to be nothing to nobody, right? Because at the end of the day, nobody likes a fence rider. That's why you look at all these people like, you know, Elon Musk, super polarizing brand, Andy Frazella, Ed Milet, Tony Robbins, like all of these people, Gary V. All of these people that everybody admires have very polarizing brands. Um, and but the people that don't like them, they don't have to work with the people that don't like them. The people that do like them swear by them, live yeah. by them. And that's what you want is the people that will shut your name from the mountaintop. Now, as you're going to design your personal brand, this is just a quick little one that I wanted to dive into because a lot of people ask me, as you'll see on the next slide, why I chose purple and it because of color psychology, right? So when you're looking at choosing colors for your brand, which a lot of people struggle with, you need to just look at what they actually represent, what they mean and the feeling that they give people. So for me as a new agent that didn't know anybody with no money, I wanted to get into the luxury space and I wanted to create a luxurious experience for my clients no matter what their budget was. So for me, I started looking at, well, cars are my passion purple represents that and that's why i started wrapping my cars purple because of the fact that by design it kind of exuded the brand feel that i really wanted people to perceive me as right whereas a lot of people especially in real estate will choose like blues because of trust and mm -hmm. you know peace and loyalty or they'll choose green because it's like very fresh and quality and things like that right so when you're looking at choosing your colors choose a couple colors like maybe for mine it was purple and black that really kind of contrast, but also have design and intent behind each of them. So let me give you guys a really clear example of what my, you know, kind of brand journey looked like. Um, and this is my personal brand example. And then the ne in the next slide, I'll show you my actual kind of journey start to finish and what it's been able to do for my business before we kind of bring this full circle. So um, as you can see here, looking at the colors, looking at the passion skill sets, my, you know, the color that I wanted to choose, I wanted to, I wanted it to embody luxury, royalty and ambition. So I chose purple by design because of that past slide. My passion was cars, which turned into my and. My skill sets, while not that being in the beginning, I wanted to make sure that that's what I became recognized for was social media. So that became my best at or my unique value proposition where when my market was very difficult, people were all just uploading properties to the MLS and letting it become a sitting duck. And what I was doing is saying, hey, I can prove to you I'm getting your property in front of thousands more people than any other agent because I'm going to show you my actual screenshots in my back end and show you I'm getting in front of thousands of other people using my Facebook ads. So I've got skin in the game. So that became a value proposition. I wanted to be recognized for my quality and work ethic, which is what allowed me to break into the luxury space because that's what people want is you don't become a millionaire in most cases without working hard. Well, I wanted to show people I worked hard. Um, and you also value quality when you're at that level because of the price point, right? And then personality wise, I wanted to be inspiring, slightly edgy, but also relatable, which then defined the copying the tonality of all of my social media posts and my ads and my video content, right? And then I looked at my role models, which was Andy Frizzell and Emma Led, which kind of was a great way to demonstrate the style of the content that I wanted to create, which then translated into this. And this is what we're gonna kind of bring a full circle with just to show you guys how you can get started with your business and things like that, uh, which is number one, I identified cars, social media, and purple. Wrap my BMW purple, which then started to, you know, allow me to consistently brand myself across all other platforms. All of my posts had a hint of my brand in them, which allowed me to have consistency across the board. So it didn't matter if you looked at my LinkedIn, Facebook page, um, you know, Instagram, YouTube channel, any platform, you would see consistency across the board and you'd be able to identify the purple, which then was becoming very relatable. Now I started getting uh, comments and DMs saying, Mike, 
you know, every time I see this color, I think of you. And that happened within four months of me being in the industry, which is really powerful, right? I then became recognized on top social media list because of that consistency and because I really stood out, um, which then I was able to leverage in terms of becoming recognized as a top agent on social in Calgary and in Alberta, which allowed me to generate clients from people that were looking at searching the modern way. Um, but then the most important part is I improved over time. You can see the difference between this photo in 2017 and then this photo from 2021. Completely different look, different car, different style, different outfits, things like that. Um, because my brand had evolved. But this is a really important one, guys, is I documented the journey the entire time from day one. Mm -hmm. Because now that people see that I've got this car and now that people see that I have what I have, Unfortunately, in many cases, you'd probably look at that and say, well, he's got wealthy parents, which my parents were broke. You probably say that he came from money, which I didn't. You probably say that he was lucky, which again, you can go back and look since 2017 of all my posts door knocking and hosting networking events that only two people showed up to and all of these things, which again, gave the credibility, but also allowed people along the way to connect with me. And now what happened was when I got that car, instead of people being jealous, I was getting, you know, literally emotional video messages from people all over the world being being like, I followed you since you said you were going to get this years ago when you had no money. I see you've got it. I feel like I've been a part of that journey. Um, and then as you start to document that journey, it's going to allow you to become recognized. So this is what my personal brand journey looked like. And I just want you to understand that when I look back at that, like that was not who I always wanted to be, but it's how I got started and it's how I broke into this space. And then as time went on, I started to really improve on it. Yeah, that's that's so important. It's such an important point that the the journey never stops because it's, it'll be interesting to see in five years where we are now. You know, with this branding, you know, it just it always evolves. But if you have your 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 key things in place, you know, you can start where you need to start and evolve over time. And that that is the big thing. You know, some people look and you get you know, I'm sure there's haters out there and stuff like that who are like, well, this guy drives a Lamborghini, blah 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 blah. But I know personally, as your friend, and obviously from your history, what is taken to get there. And, you know, the brand is is almost just the language of the journey. It's showing us how things have progressed. So starting today is like the biggest thing. We always talk about imperfect action is better than no action at all. You know, you just have to get started, you know, and it can chop and it can change. Like from the colors, I use yellow in a lot of my things because it's like, it's, it's warm. It's, it's friendly. It's like cheerful. That's more my personality. I actually took a color code test, which you can do for free. You just look up uh, colorcode.com or something like that. And you can actually find out what your color personality is. Just start using that. So these things are, are super important and easy. You just have to start implementing them and and get out there definitely man so um guys we're gonna bring it full circle here and i just want you to understand that again it's it's really important to make this a priority because if you look at any top agent if you look at again the example i always like to say to people is like if i asked a thousand agents which brokerage ryan sirhan was at before he started sirhan probably 990 couldn't tell me what it was mm -hmm. right because again people knew him didn't know the brokerage, right? It's right. all about who knows you and the best way to get people to know you and what makes you unique is to really lean into creating a personal brand that communicates what makes you different. Because this is where a lot of agents, you know, really struggle where I constantly get the feedback of Mike, I'm tired of having to pitch to clients why they should work with me. I'm tired of them not coming directly to me and me always having to hunt for the next deal and always having to go in that hamster wheel because people don't know why they should work with you. And the reason why they don't know that is because you're not communicating that at scale by leveraging these strategies in order to build a unique personal brand that's authentic to you, that's transparent to others, and that really separates you from the rest of the competition. And then the next thing, which we'll talk about in the final part of this video series that I'm doing with Louie, is then amplifying that through content right? Mm -hmm. It's identify it and then amplify it so that more people will start to see you and become familiar with who you are that otherwise might not have before. Yeah, that's awesome. So like we said at the start of the video, guys, if you stayed to the end, I was going to give you something big and here it is. So all you have to do is subscribe, like this video, comment below on what you're going to do with your branding. It could be color. It could be your story. It could be what your niche is. Tell us what you're going to do. And if you do all those things, you can win a free subscription to the Social Agent Academy, which is going to give you the complete outline step-by-step -step of how to implement this. This is an insane 
uh, program here and course that Mike has put out. So subscribe, like, comment below on what you're doing, and you'll be entered in to win a free subscription to that server. So Mike, can't thank you enough again. I'm really looking to forward to our third video that we're going to be doing on video, which is something that we both love. So guys, we will see you on the next one. Take care, guys.